Well, good morning, folks. What a weekend. As you know, there have been ballistic and cruise missile rocket attacks and killer drone attacks on Israel by Iran. So that's probably going to put the markets in a bit of chaos and uncertainty during this week. And it could benefit things like gold and oil and even the stock markets and so on. However, there is this idea that this is a sort of an orchestrated dance and it's not a real attack. It's a retaliation, a show of strength, a saving of face, if you will, for the Iranians, and that it was almost an agreed sort of retaliation by the various parties involved. Now, I'm not sure if that's true or not. I don't know. But if it is, the markets will react differently, and we won't see the flee to safety like we've seen. And perhaps it could even be the opposite way around. There could be some sort of deal or peace treaty or truce or some sort of agreement that goes on, and the market gives a collective sigh of relief, and actually the things go in the opposite direction. So be aware of all of that. It's a lot of geopolitical shenanigans going on. And of course, we've got the Middle East situation now heating up Russia, Ukraine sort of in a in the balance right now. I'm not too sure of the real military status of that conflict. So bear all of that in mind. Everything is not what it seems and things could get a little bit weird. I put a few tweets up on X, but not a lot. I had a quiet weekend. There's one in Iran attacking Israel here. And incidentally, and interestingly, in the Wall Street Journal 10 days ago, there was a lot of talk and debate about whether Iran has nuclear weapons or not, or the capacity to deliver them. So we don't really know. Natural gas is actually trying to reverse. I'm looking at the charts to my left here, and we haven't broken out of this pattern, and it's holding up quite well. So we'll have a look at that chart. Dollar index right up into resistance now, and probably due for a pullback. The dollar index doesn't rally continuously like this and move in one direction all the time, as you can see if you just glance to the left. So we definitely do a pullback, and we are into this resistance. Zone. So we'll keep an eye on that. War in general may be negative for the dollar because it will be positive for stocks and gold. And it's often the dollar that takes the hit on the stock markets that reap the benefits. And that's not surprising either. So keep that in mind. I think the dollar could pull back. We could see some strength in the euro, some weakness in the dollar, including the dollar yen, which I see I'm looking at my chart to the left again is just now turning around and forming a spike high on the four hour, which is what we want. Natural gas we've talked about. We had those tweezer bottoms. And here's WTI. Now, I put this chart up on the 12th, which was Friday. And I drew this pattern. This pattern didn't hold, and we actually spiked up into this red block. But we're now pulling back down again and actually quite weak. I'm going to add more to my short position if we close beneath $84 today. I'm looking for a move down and a breakdown below the support and a move back into the channel. We'll have a look at the chart shortly. Yeah, and that's it for now. I'll put some more tweets up on X a bit later on. So if you're not following me on my X channel, you can go over there at ArcusFX. Let's go and have a look at the charts. I don't want to spend too much time on what's going on just to gain a positional update, but I will do another detailed video later. And I'm planning a live stream this week, so keep tuned for that and I'll put that notification up today. Basically, I'm looking to buy euro into dips if we do see a reversal on the dollar. Now, we've just approached the support level on the euro. We've got the 78.6% Fibonacci below us at 1.06. That's a very key number. It's a round number. It's also within this order block. And on the daily chart, the euro is becoming a bit oversold. Overall, I do think we're going to see further euro weakness and dollar strength. And that means any rallies in the euro in the end will be good opportunities to sell if the dollar retains its strength. And the dollar could get a lot stronger, despite all the nations say is about the dollar. We're short on the dollar yen and I've just talked about that forming a little spike high. You can't see it on the day chart. It's on the hour chart. I'm watching this one closely. We're caught on the wrong side of this at the moment, but I'm also watching the dollar index. And if the dollar index manages to pull back in today from this very overbought position, then we should see the dollar yen pulling back in and then the euro and the pound finding some footing and perhaps even the Australian dollar too. And with the commodities that Australia supplies, we could see some sort of support for the Australian dollar if we see strength in those commodities, including gold and other metals. Right. Right, stocks. Now, I don't know. We've been stuck in this range for about two months on the NASDAQ and up and down, up and down every single day. We remain short. Basically, we haven't changed our position on this for about a month now, and it hasn't moved for about a month. So we're still stuck at the top here. We're in a bit of profit on our shorts from near these red arrows. We've got nothing on SPX. We're short NVIDIA. We're long on Apple. That, that's going incredibly well. That was uh, unforeseen, I suppose. And then Tesla, we're long as well. And that's just been going sideways for quite some time. Now on metals, we had an interesting one in gold. I'll try and sort of reconstruct this for you. We went short at 23.20. We hedged at 23.45. We got out of our hedge above $2,400 and took profit on the long and then kept the short. And we're back down here now. And I still think that this could pull in a bit. I don't think that overall gold is bearish. I think we've got some consolidation to encounter right now and a pullback into this channel. Gold's one of those things like the dollar index, actually, that doesn't travel in one direction for too long. We get these sudden spurts and bursts. 
and then lengthy periods of correction and pullback. And that's probably what we're going to enter now. You can see this red arrow that I drew in some time back. We've gone a little higher than I expected, but that's okay. We actually profited from it. And I'm looking for a pullback down to first of all the channel top, then the center line, and possibly even the channel bottom. That would take us down to 2100. But first of all, 2200, the channel center and the big round number at 22 and the breakout level is going to be the first support. And then going across to some of these energies, we're long on URA, as you know, that's been going sideways for almost two weeks. Same on UEC, we're long on that, the two uranium plays. We're long on natural gas, and I did a couple of videos on natural gas last week. So there's not much else to say since Friday, because since Friday, we've just gone sideways. Now, here's my long position from Friday, that green arrow. Those were previous long positions. Those have been played out already. So this is the fresh one. I'm looking for a move up to $2, 215 or 220, and then 235 or 240. If we fail to hold support here, we've got various blocks beneath us. This is a four hour chart. I'm gonna to switch to the day chart over at my broker. And it's interesting to look at the day chart on my broker's chart. I don't often do this. I normally look at the Henry Hub. These green arrows are all of our entry points over the last month or two. And we've been pretty consistent in picking the bottom, and this time we've picked another bottom. I'm hoping that we won't dip down below here. We are below the moving averages, bear that in mind. We're below the 20 and the 50 and the 100 and the 200, which is miles above us. With a bit of luck, we won't have to revisit the bottom of the support level at around 1.5, and we'll continue to move up from here. What I can also do is draw a Fibonacci retracement study on here from the bottom to the top, like that. And you can see we've retraced exactly 61.8% of the swing from this low to that high there. I must warn you, of course, that if we don't hold here. We've got 1.65 below us, this previous swing low. Then we've got 1.5-ish, that's this year's low, and potentially even lower. I don't think, once again, that that's the most likely path. Let's switch this back to the four hour chart and once again, have a look at it. We've got a little reversal pattern going on here as well. I called this a megaphone pattern. I actually put a tweet up on it. It looks something like that. And someone else pointed out to me, it's actually a lozenge or a diamond formation, which it could be too. Either way, it's a reversal pattern at the 618, and I'm hoping that this will hold. This last four hour candle is looking a bit positive after the previous four hour candle was a full stop doji reversal candle. Let's have a look at WTI oil very quickly. We still haven't added more short positions. I was waiting for a move up into the high 80s or 90s, but we are moving down now. There are our short positions that we currently hold. I haven't added more, as I said, but I will be looking to add more if we have a four hourly and a daily close beneath $84. I've only got a 50% position size on at the moment, and I'll be looking to add add to that if we do close beneath $84. And then Bitcoin, I'm still long. I just added some more at 65,000 and some change. Our average price on the long now is $67,000 and I'm aiming for much, much higher. I'm hoping now that we've formed a swing low above the 50 period moving average and the channel bottom and that we'll move up to the channel top and that would currently take us up to around about $90,000. If this swing low over here at about 60,000 and this channel bottom fails, then I suppose my hypothesis will be completely wrong. Then we'll have to start worrying if Bitcoin's actually formed a top over over here and that the next period is going to be downwards. However, I don't think that's the most likely scenario. And the dollar South African Rand, we've broken back up into this channel now, into this resistance level, a little bit of resistance above us. We've got the 50 period moving average we're contending with right now. We've got elections coming up and I think there's going to be some pressure on the Rand. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, now's a good time to do so. So you get notification about the live stream and all the future updates and a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Have a great trading week. Take care.